morning everybody hope you can hear me right um, so today our lecture is about industrial aspects of lightning protection systems since uh, you are university students i'm not going to emphasize on the design aspects but rather we will highlight about the industrial aspects since you are moving to the industry some day uh bit about myself uh, i'm representing amti power consultants and we are carrying out electrical audits designs testing and commissioning and whole range of works in the electrical industry so uh, the importance of lightning protection systems you already heard about lightning protection systems right we call it akuna sannayaka paddhati Uh, any tamil students here no in tamil i think uh, lightning is called as minnal okay um so lightning protection systems are crucial they are vital for high rise buildings specifically and if you are having sensitive equipment in your buildings they are susceptible to damages during the lightning in the region or maybe even from the lightning Uh, incidents happening remotely that's why sometimes uh, your trip switch at home gets uh, tripped off and you are suddenly thinking that uh, a lightning had struck somewhere that's uh, an undesirable uh, effect actually tripping of our installation during a lightning we do not need our installation to get tripped off during lightning we need to have a smooth operation if you are running a server maybe you need to have continuous operation of the whole system so uh, the lecture will outline uh, the definitions of lightning and the what standard to follow in order to uh, implement a lightning protection system and how to evaluate the risk level maybe somewhat strange term but i will be explaining that to you and uh, how to design that's the most important part that's why you are here actually to learn how to design in terms of industrial aspects and about the internal lps internal lightning protection systems you might not have heard of that before and uh, what are the proceedings in the industry so uh, without any delay i will move on to the first topic what is light what is lightning and uh, sometimes we get confused with the word lighting and lightning as engineers please remind yourself to you know that there's an additional n over there okay because uh, lightning not lighting i'm saying this as a like a, maybe uh, i've been uh, passed out for 5 uh, years but uh, even i'm seeing that the senior engineers are making that mistake and mostly the students are making that mistake obviously and uh, we do not need you to make that mistake in the industry confusing lighting and lightning and the definitions are there on internet you can google it what is lightning and it's actually discharge of electrical charge from cloud to earth that's the basic definition you can google it if you need and uh, the definitions we are not much concerned as engineers because that belongs to the field of uh, lightning physics because it's an evolving subject area still under research nobody has come up with the perfect model for uh, simulating or reflecting the perfect lightning protection or lighting incident and uh, we'll see this this is some what you might uh, come across in your future lectures by uh, professor rohan lucas and uh, dr asan rodrigo as well the lightning has a process first uh, there's a thunderstorm forming uh, in the clouds uh, in between the clouds as well as uh, from cloud level to medium ground level and there's a charge separation happening in the cloud you know the cloud is comprised of certain particles ice particles dust molecules and other substances maybe uh, 
solidified gas molecules. So each molecule type has it is uh, inherited charges. You have heard during uh, physics, I guess, right? When you're rubbing of a certain material, you, you get a specific charge. And likewise, even in the clouds, you have substances which have an inherent charge. So du during the uh, processes inside the cloud, such as the uh, wind flow and uh, the pressure difference inside the cloud, these charges get separated. And mostly what we see is that negative charges building up in the bottom part of the cloud. And obviously, so the positive charges are dense uh, in the top part. So when this uh, negative charge is uh, building up, it's ionizing the air layer underneath it. And it's propagating downwards the, uh, to, towards the earth. And obviously, you had heard about prayer and air, right? And it's inducing the ground in positive. It's negative over here and it's positive on the ground. And it's propagating downwards. This positive charges is forming something called streamer. It's called streamer. Uh, you might need to take notes if you need, okay? And uh, this is called the step leader. This leader, it's leading downwards, and this is stream. It's streaming upwards. You know, the same thing as you are streaming your videos, likewise. And uh, when this uh, leader and the stream meets, you builds up a dart over here. It's, it builds up a path. Once the path is completed, you will experience a lightning downwards and upwards. OK, uh, this incident uh, actually uh, given in time scale right over here. You can go through the pictures and charge separation and the charges building up over here. This is the attachment process we taught you. And the first return stroke is originating from the ground towards the cloud. And once the stroke is completed, these dart leaders are formed afterwards. This is uh, happening in a fraction of a second. That's why we can't see these multiple steps, like a fluorescent bulb. It's flickering, right? Fluorescent bulb are flickering, but we are seeing uh, almost a constant light output over there. The same happens with the lightning as well. So I'll uh, show you a video. What is lightning? in terms of electrical engineer's perspective. It's simply a type of waveform, actually. It's not an alternative waveform we are dealing in electrical AC theory. This is a, something like a pulse. Uh, it has a rise time of 10 microseconds, and it takes 350 microseconds to reach its 50%. So this is uh, called a direct lightning stroke direct lightning stroke. It's once a uh, lightning strike is directly hit on a grounded system, if we measure, if you can, then you can get uh, some uh, waveform like this. This is actually a test waveform, not the actual waveform of the lightning strike, but this is a test waveform which we are using to test our equipment which are rated uh, to protect the buildings or internal systems. And this is the waveform of indirect lightning strikes. Indirect, indirect. It's, uh, it's like you are heard about the falls, direct falls, indirect falls. Have you heard? Like you have, some may have already known that. And uh, direct and indirect is uh, simply the position or the point of strike. If you are considering about the direct strike to the building, or oh, it's a strike somewhere remotely, but indirectly impacting our internal systems if it's diverting towards the installation. And uh, this is about lightning peak currents. So you have a graph over here, peak current, and the percent exceeding uh, abscesses 
and uh, there are negative and positive strikes. The negative and positive strikes depend on the direction of the lightning from cloud to ground. If it's cloud to ground, we have negative strikes. And if the leader is from ground to cloud, it's called the positive strikes. So these negative strikes are ranging from around uh, 8 kiloamps to 100 kiloamps. The probability of occurrences I'll show you later, but this is a general diagram of the lightning currents. To have a feeling about the, the intensity of the lightning, we have to understand the how we have to quantify the lightning. And uh, why lightning matters to us? Actually, like as students, you might not have any problem with the lightning right now, but when you maybe uh, if your home is destructed or destroyed by lightning, then you get the concern. Or if uh, you move on to the industry and you are supposed to build, uh, build or design a lightning protection system, then you have to understand the theories and the practices of lightning protection system designs. But uh, I hope that uh, this is a good instance for you to understand the basics, actually. I'm not, I'm not expecting you to grab the whole thing. At least 1% of what I teach you today is enough for you. You just need to grasp the basics of lightning protection systems. You need to see certain things. That's uh, all what's enough for you at the moment. Then one day you can, when you build a lightning protection system, once you refer standards, you can remember the basics. And obviously, during your course modules over here at university, you'll be learning theories, but the industrial aspects are somewhat further ahead of the theories, actually applying those theories. That's what the uh, ultimate outcome of your learning process. And uh, the lightning causes damages to occupants, structures, and contents. The occupants could be either humans or animals. And structures could be made out of wood, even steel, concrete, whatsoever. Nothing can withstand lightning, direct hit. The contents, either they are combustible or non-combustible, are they flammable, non-flammable, are they explosive? If you are thinking about uh, explosive storage, maybe if it gets uh, struck by a lightning, then the whole thing is over. Even the uh, buildings in the vicinity would get blasted. So lightning protection systems are much crucial, but in Sri Lanka, such facilities are not protected with lightning protection systems. And some photos from the internet, these are true photos. Uh, the person over here got struck by lightning. He got survived, but most people do not get survived. Even though you get survived, you will be ended up with permanent injuries inside you to the skin and internal systems. And this lady over here, you can see those uh, those tree forming. Those are called Lichtenberg figures. And uh, the cattle over here got struck by lightning, although they were under the tree. So tree is not a good place for you to be safe during lightning, actually. You heard about step potential, right? Step potential? Yes? If you have heard, just raise your hand. I don't, I'm not asking questions. Just need to get your feedback. Have you learned about step potential? Okay, uh, step potential is uh, simply the voltage difference applying uh, across my legs, step potential. And touch potential is if I'm touching this, say this is a metallic surface over here, this is metallic, I'm touching this, and if a voltage applies between my hand and my feet, if that exceeds my breakdown voltage, then I'm dusted. So, although I'm standing over here without touching anything, if a lightning struck somewhere around here, 
and once the voltage profile is built up and what sort of voltage difference would apply between my feet would determine my life expectancy maybe. Understand? Uh, I'll draw you. So this is even feel my home over here, very simple home. And uh, we have a tree over here. And uh, a very tall guy, say, standing over here. And he was a small fellow standing over here. And say, a cattle, maybe a monster. So, this is an animal, okay? And uh, if you say a lightning strike to the tree, simply my lightning current disperses towards the earth, right? But it will create damages to the tree, obviously, because the heat generation, when you are conducting through a resistor, can vaporize the water inside the tree. So the tree gets damaged permanently. And uh, what about the voltage profile building in the ground? You know, uh, same color. V equals IR, right? So if lightning current disperses downwards, there's a, these are the roots. So there's a certain R over here, right? Resistance. So once the resistance uh, is blocking the current, we get a voltage rise, right? We get a voltage rise over here. So if you draw the voltage profile, it will be something like this. My voltage and this is the distance. This is the voltage profile. It's peak over here and it gets diminished across the land. And what would happen to this fellow? He gets applied with this voltage. Right? Understand? I'm teaching in very simple terms. Uh, if you can't see, you can come over here. And uh, about this fellow, this little guy, is experiencing a little less voltage difference. And this creature is experiencing a higher voltage difference. But if he's, say if he's positioned over here, what would happen? If its legs are much uh, apart, then this voltage difference would put him to death, right? That's that's what you can understand from this incident. This is happening in the United States very frequently. The cattle are getting dead. There are lots of farms. And the lightning density and the probability of lightning strikes are quite high. So the damages are also frequent in the United States. And damages to structures. This is a roof of a house, got damaged, and I have personally seen this in many mansions, because their land area is quite large, so the probability of getting struck is quite high. They, are, they have tall structures, they got higher risk as well. And most mansions do, are not protected by lightning protection systems. And the fires, this is a true incident captured from Twitter. So the fires are very frequently happening right after the lightning, prote lightning uh, strikes. And about the damage to the contents, electronic guys, we have electronic engineering students. Electronics, no? Okay. 
anyway, like uh, this very undesirable event for those fellows, your friends. But even electrical engineering people are experienced because electrical engineering professionals are also dealing with the electronic systems, controllers. Like when you move to the industry, you will come across these microelectronic devices attached to the maybe transformers. So we cannot forget electronics. They are much susceptible to damage from lightning as well. And this is a fire tank, a fuel tank. It are damaged by fire. And this fire was caused by a lightning strike. Enormous fire after lightning strikes, Mumbai oil terminal. This true news. They might already have lightning protection systems, but there's something lacking, right? And uh, these are the areas where we need lightning protection systems, from residential buildings to commercial, industrial installations, and telecommunication towers, and outdoor equipment. Outdoor equipment means you have street lights, LED advertising boards, and you have certain cubicles outside, maybe from telecom people. There are sensitive electronics even outside our building. We cannot forget the equipment mounted on streets as well. Those are the actually the infrastructure. And actually, uh, the most important topic of today, what standard to follow? This is all what you need to remember today, which standard you're going to follow, because you can then Google and find the standard, and you can go through yourself someday. But you need to know what standard to follow. And uh, a little advice to my brothers and sisters over here. As engineers, never go by the Google results or forums, web, web, web articles. You might be doing you may, might be using that for your coursework, maybe, even I use that. But when you're practicing, you need to follow standards. You should not follow the instructions from the online experts, but you can get their opinion. But you always have to follow the standards, because as professionals, you abide by a certain code of ethics, and you have to play within your expertise. And you are responsible for the lives, property of the country. And say, if you are a consultant, thank you. Say, if you are a consultant, you are putting your signature as a child engineer. And if something happens to the occupants or the valuable structure, then you might get in trouble. Following standards is the only way out. I'm not telling that the focus of an engineer should be to escape from a problem, but there's a legal framework running the country. You need to have, have pay your ground or your foundation in order to save your career as well, as a profession. By saving your career, in terms of following the standards, you are also protecting the lives and the property. And this is, there's a cold war in industry, okay? I thought uh, you might like this, that's it. Uh, there are st several standards in the industry. This Sri Lanka, and we are much prefer to use British standards and maybe global standards rather than Indian standards, French standards, or Chinese standards. I'm not uh, accusing any standard because I'm not authorized to criticize any standard, I'm just Put in the word, the cold war in industry. This is the opinion of the majority. Uh, refusing the French standards and going by the IEC standards, because this IEC is the global standard. You can search on the internet what is IEC. The French standards are a bit uh, safe and very cost effective compared to the British standards because they are guaranteeing uh, quite a larger protection area. 
if you mount an arrestor lightning protection system it's guaranteeing a quite large area of protection compared to the IEC standards the IEC standard is about the conventional method franklin rods samanya akun sannayaka thani akun sannay kurute anna eva thamma api IEC wilin katha karanna we are speaking about the conventional rods air terminals in the IC standards but the French standards are giving uh, something like an ESC early stream emitter a device something like this it's guaranteeing a large area when you uh, travel in Colombo you might see some buildings have an lightning arrestor like this and certain buildings have a simple collection of rods and arrestors like kuru tunak wage thiyena ewa thiyena ewa thiyena tani kuru ewa thiyena the project specifications at the beginning of a project it should mention which standard to follow actually and it should ultimately get the approval from the local authority say uh, siloni electricity board is the uh, client of the project for a power station project and he is the client siloni electricity board and he is giving a certain specifications for the design and the constructor to follow so those specifications should indicate which standard to follow if some day if those french standards got the approval from the experts all around the world then cb might go indicating those ESC early stream emitters in the specifications so what we are going to follow as sri lankan electrical engineers is iec 62305 meka nyang kata padame ngolu tibbat kamanne mantare wage japa karala diya gatat kamanne mokada meka kawadhari dasa golana kiyanna one nawan tanakade kiyanna puluwa wenna same like uh, bs7671 ogolla me dr asanka ge ta model ek karena ne installation kawuruth ne so in electrical installation designs you have you have to follow in sri lanka by electricity act it's given you have to follow bs7671 but according to sri lankan law this is not enforced but this globally accepted so maybe you can take a photo photograph and or maybe share among your group this is the standard you have to follow okay this is all i need to tell you today the 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 essence of the lecture you have to follow ic62305 in current context maybe in future this might get changed but for the time being you have to follow this standard and there are four parts of the standard part 1 general principles it's giving the definitions and the uh, it's giving the waveforms of the lightning strikes and second part is risk management we have to manage the risk of the lightning and how to assess that and how to manage it it's given in part 2 arthritis physical damage of structures and life hazard so under this it's giving off the design aspects of lightning protection systems and part 4 is about electrical and electronic systems within structures so if we are concerned about the electronics maybe our internet router we have to follow the guidelines given in the part 4 so there are four parts in ic62005 and part 1 about basic principles it gives about source of damage and types of damage the source of damage are of four categories it could either be a flash to the structure or near the structure source one is flashes to the structure and 
source 2 is flashes near a structure and source 3 is flashes to service. This service could either be low voltage line or telecommunication line maybe. Whatever service coming into our installation would carry those lightning surges into the building, although our building got not directly struck by lightning. This is happening very frequently in industry, this incident and uh, from the power plants to residential buildings, they are complaining over these incidents and as engineers, we have to follow the standard and propose the suitable resolution to them. So you have to understand, this is not just a hypothetical theory, but actual case. Lightning are hitting to the service and also near the service, both are creating problems to our installation. And what type of damages? D1, D2, D3, there are three damages. Uh, injury to live beings and uh, physical damages to our structures and failures of internal systems. Those are the three damages. First is the injury to living beings, maybe human or the livestock like we saw, or the physical damages which cause a huge amount of recovery cost and failure of internal systems, much critical these days. The continuous running of servers are more crucial nowadays. Now Sri Lanka is installing a lot of amount of servers around the country. That's the future of the country, cloud services. So in order to do that, you need to have servers running, continuous servers with redundant supply, N plus one maybe. If a certain server fails, you have to rely on the second server. But both need to have those protection against these flashes to the structure or even outside the structure. So very important, but I understand that you might not feel the importance of these damages at the moment, but maybe right after you graduate, if you, when you go to the job, you might face these incidents, okay. In advance, just uh, grab some idea about these uh, damages and the uh, source of damages and types of damages. And how to evaluate the level of risk. This is a very comprehensive diagram. You might get bored reading through the whole thing. <laughs> uh, just remember, there are four risk levels. R1, R2, R3, and R4. It's a, the risk assessment is a combination of calculations, cascaded calculations. You need an Excel calculation, obviously. And uh, you cannot do the calculation manually over again and again. You need to prepare a certain Excel sheet or maybe purchase a licensed software. Then you have to change the parameters and you get the output. That's the basic concept of risk assessment. Practice in the industry because uh, reading the standard, going from table to the other table, you have formulas, you cannot do the manual calculation again and again. Okay. So the types of losses are categorized under each risk, under from R1 to R4. And the types of damages are subcategorized under those losses. The process of evaluating risk level. First, you have to identify the building. I'll assume. Identify the building or structure to be protected. The meaning of this is to identify the parameters, actually, the building. The length, width, height, what sort of a building. And uh, what's the occupancy of the building. And also, if a fire erupts in the building, what's the mechanism or what's the scheme prepared for escape? There's a particular fire escape plan in the building so that people would not get panic and got struck inside. This is also included in this building 
parameters. And once you have identified the relevant types of damages, like I showed in the previous diagram, you have to evaluate using the formula, these from R A, R B, R C, these parameters. And then you have to evaluate this R value. Uh, this step is important for you because uh, even during the module you will learn this, but having an idea before this is uh, quite important because if you miss this out, then the whole concept of risk evaluation is gone. This is your calculation, and uh, this is the RT value, this is a toler tolerable value. RT is defined for our building. If this, if our risk level, the actual risk level is exceeding the RT value, then our building or structure is protected. And I have to mention here that uh, why we are talking about the risk is lightning is actually a probability. This probability, you know, if the, even though you implement a very perfect lightning protection systems, still you get the chance to get hit by a lightning. Even the standard specifies that it's a percentage. It's guarantee 99.99%, but that rest of the 0.01% could be even tomorrow. It doesn't say that, but that's our experience. The people are expecting a lightning protection system to guarantee a 100% protection, but nobody or no standard guarantees that. So that's what you have to understand. There's no perfect installation having 100% protection, but the probability is quite, quite low if you implement an installation very specifically as per the standards. And if you, if your installation is not protected, it's asking if an LPS, lightning protection system, is installed, then uh, if lightning protection uh, means, so there's a whole lot of process. I'll stop from there just to stop from, uh, I mean, uh, with the uh, pertain to the diagram. I'll stop from here because this is the important part for you. Uh, apart from uh, aspect of industry, when you go on forward with the calculations, then these uh, parts will come. I'll show you our Excel calculations we do at our company. Then you can understand what sort of parameters are there. Likewise, we will explain in theories would not give you a good understanding. Okay. And... Uh, what sort of current range are we talking about? There are called protection class. There are four classes. Class 1, class 2, class 3, and class 4. Class 1 is having a range from 3 kilo amps to 200 kilo amps. So this portion is very crucial. If our risk assessment gives us the outcome as class 1, it says you need class 1 protection. That's what the risk level gives us. Or it says you need class 4 protection. Depending on your class, you have to build the system. That's the outcome of the evaluation. And class 2, class 3, class 4, when it go, the, uh, go from class 1 to 4, your range becomes narrower. Understand? So, class 1 is very dangerous, maybe. It has a higher risk, and class 4 is okay. Shape. How do you say it? If you say class 4, you can say the calculation of class 4. If you say it, you can say it. If you say it, you can say it. When you go, Towards from class 4 to 1, the cost increases. 
because you have very close arrangement of copper arresters, uh, copper tapes, the grounding system, it all gets uh, maybe double, triple, quadruple in, in terms of the material usage and it reflects on the cost. But if your risk evaluation gives you class one, then in order to protect the installation, then obviously you have to go for class one. If you install with class four, nobody can guarantee that your installation is protected. And uh, you would not be covered by the insurance maybe. Insurance matters. And how to design external LPS is also, uh, this is not very complicated, okay? Although this indicates a lot of boxes over here. It's a very simple process. Don't get bored just because uh, you need to understand these concepts. The first one is characteristics of structure protected, like we talked, risk assessment, we did that. And third is selection of type of external LPS. So the type of external LPS in gives us the materials, the sizes, and the natural components. The natural components are actually the components in the building which is already protected. We, we don't need any other metallic parts to protect our building. If you already have a steel roof, steel wall is not column rebus steel bus and ever connect la ground in grounding system then we are covered by that but we have to make sure those sizes of the conductors are adequate enough to deliver this lightning current from roof to earth if that satisfies that range then we already have natural components natural component so, we have to the building to the protection. Lightning is the protection. If you have to the building, you lightning protection. Uh, Mama, slide the game, it is a little bit of 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 a of of three main parts, air termination, down conductor and earth termination. Okay. Uh, this is the third outcome of your lecture today. You have to keep this in mind. Akuno mehma ek ek kinnna akuno ena kambalang ek ek kinnna. Tawa ek ek kinnna uva pahal tayavane ke. Tawa ek ek kinnna uva pole atule tayavane ke. Ek ayka ke lagyan mong me material sinda. Their job is to deliver the lightning current from roof to the ground. And you, you can see that uh, there are internal earth terminations inside the building. That is under the internal systems or internal lightning protections. The external lightning protection is this part. This is exterior to the building. So our air termination should be. I'm mentioning should because we are following 62305, but uh, as an independent engineer, I should say that we can because uh, I cannot stress anybody to follow French standards or IC standards, but you can design with 62305. So it gives three basic design methods for air termination system. You can arrange air terminals wherever you can feel that, but you have to evaluate that. We have to evaluate that in a particular manner. So there are three methods given in the standard Rollins sphere method, protective angle method and mesh method. Rolling sphere, what do Sphere is rolling. If you have a ball, you can put it in the protective angle method. Right? And uh, you have the protective angle method. Protective angle. 
अरेस्ट का मेहमत ये ना ना या के आप इधर ना याम अरे कोने कटे ना थ्री डिमेंशनल वॉल्यूम में कितना ना कोने के अने वॉल्यूम में काफी प्रोटेक्टेड किए लगी है ना इमरान तब लोग मेश मेथड किए ने कटे हैं मेश मेथड देखे जी तीन ने आप इधर तीन ना बिल्ली ने कोड़े मेश का मैं मेश का भी देना साइज से का तीन ना ना ये लोग समाटो मॉड्यूल लगात करा दी ओगल लंड पैरलेन ने बोला मेश एंड ग्रिड किए ने का मेश के लिए क्या ने पॉडी कोटू आ पॉडी कोटू गोड़ा की कुतला तो मगल ने ग्रिड्डा किए ने हर दे ओगल सबस्टेशन आई थिंक करते हैं मैं वहाँ तो प्रोफेसर लोकस मॉड्यूल लगाते हैं ओगल लंड आंटी मटर सबस्टेशन आई थ Methods to evaluate the lightning protection system of the building. First is the rolling sphere method. We talked about four classes, right? In those four colors, we talked about four classes with uh, different current ranges. Class one uh, had up to 200 kiloamps, and when you go from class one to class four. Your maximum possible current is decreasing down to 100 kiloamps. Me class one, class four ke ne ke severity ke daruno ta vaniya matagati agar na me ogolangi class ke daan first class ke lage na patta dalle ne. Idhar ei agita ma class four ke lage na apyaagi metro. Ekane class one sira. To kotha he can the system can protect the structure. Very effectively, although there is a high risk of lightning. And uh, class four, the pulu ani can shape pege. Again, mukho the age lightning current ka doi ne. Abi kiwe up to hundred kilograms rathi ne. Itor epatte current ka doi na. And the building height is low, and there are less number of uh, services coming into the building. Then you have a lower uh, level of risk. So you can uh, manage with class four. And uh, when you go from class one to class four, your rolling sphere radius is also increasing. Me bole arayat, gole arayat, lokuve na. Class one is a four volt adi. And uh, this is how we evaluate the lightning protection with the rolling spheres. Me chandi karlati na me ekka bole ya karagena apni, me ekka karakwaagan ya na. Me bole ek gravity ka tina hoide, hi mahi thanda. Me bole ek power na be. This ball is not spider man na. It has a gravity, so it has to support on a, uh, yeah, uh, either ground or earth surface. Gole make a gravity, may add support in the pool, may ball like a grounded components. So, it can either be this earth or these copper tapes or copper structures, which are eventually earth. Make a earth color thing of penal and मैं तीन हम कोबा पार्ट टका कुछ ना अर्थ वेने है वा ये तो कोटा पे उड़ने निकांग अर्थ का कपी क्रिएट कर लेती है ना बोरु अर्थ का पेन्ना ना समथिंग लाइक अ वर्चुअल अर्थ ओवर हियर एंड ओवर हियर सो दिस बॉल कैन रोल ओवर दिस पार्ट्स सपोज दैट यू डोंट हैव दिस कोबा पार्ट्स देन व्हाट वुड हैपन मैं क मगे मैं कॉपर पार्ट्स तो बुन नेतंग में ने मैं जब मैं बोल रोल कराया ना वाने मां क्यों ना मटे मैं बोल सपोर्ट करने पड़ो वांग अर्थ अर्थ कर पुदेवल उड़ी तरह किया ला तो वाले बोले रोल कराया याद दी मैं आटो उड़ना गिन बैम को द अपे इंटेंशनल अर्थ नहीं कोई बात मैं मैं वाने एक ही � we have to introduce uh, these copper or oh, metallic components. I'm not specifying copper. It can be copper, aluminum, uh, GI, stainless steel. There are various materials I'll be uh, showing you at the end. Meva earth karpu eude thakura me aata roll la yana pulva. Mithan tapu goma meka dog gal aata no mithan tapu goma. Meka mithan tiyaga me aata mehemi inna be. It has to support na. 
मैं आटा ग्रेविटी अप्लाई वेनो के लिए हितन्ने मुकोदे मैं वो कौन करांती ना 3D स्पेस से कोकलन्दे मैं एक माउंट 2D में पेन्नो आटा गेवा गे इट हैज अ डेप्थ ने योर रियल इंस्टॉलेशन हैज अ डेप्थ सो यू हैव टू मॉडल द बिल्डिंग्स इन 3D एंड यू हैव टू इमेजिन द होल थिंग इन योर माइंड एंड रोल द स्फीयर बोल बैठने गेम्स वाले प्रोग्राम करा देते हैं मने यार तीन वाले में आप बोल लेगी ही लोगों हरे वैद्यन होते हैं रिफ्लेक्ट है ना हरे बैठना हरे इफेक्ट करते हैं योग में यार फिजिक्स इंजन दो ना नेवा के इंजन ने दो अन्य ना बोलूँगे रोलिंग सीओ दान होता है इन्हें पढ़ा कर प्रैक्टिकल पैट्टा हिता � Protective angle method. Okay, uh, this angle can differ depending on the height from the reference. अभी कोई ना बोले अभी support करे अभी follow उड़े नहीं। मैं दे angle method देखे दिया अभी बालान नहीं। Follow आते का तो ये ना height देखे। अरे ना तो earth कर पो और अभी क्यों आगे earth कर पो component देखे ना तो ये ना मैं कर देना height देख मात्र मैं आगे angle देखा रोंदा पाओ तीनों। If this arrest is going up and up, so this angle decreases. This is the, it's shown over here. When you go from class one, from class two, three, four, you have four curves to follow. The x-axis is the h, means the height of this arrestor. And, uh, pardon, this height should apply depending on your reference plane actually, from reference plane, because if you consider this side, the reference plane is over here, provided that this part is earth, like our previous case, then only we can uh, have this angle. Otherwise, it's like uh, our, if our components over here, building components are not earth, then it should have something like this, right? There are nothing, monkey negative. दें मैं मैं पैनल आती है इन्हें मैं तो ना अर्थ कर पू हिंदत हमारे यहाँ टा में मैं वाके रेंज एक गन पुला में लाती है मैं वाके एंगल ले इफ इट्स नॉट प्रोटेक्टेड हियर विथ कॉपर टेप्स और व्हाट्सोवर देन यू वुड हैव एन एंगल समथिंग लाइक दिस सो दिस पार्ट ओनली दिस पार्ट ऑफ़ द बिल्डिंग वु like this, and you have an arrestor. Say for this height, say, the, say this height is, uh, say uh, the, the risk level, the risk level was uh, determined as class four. From my risk assessment, I determine the class as class four. So I have this curve, this green curve should be followed from 2 meter to 60 meter, the, ray, the angle is given. This alpha angle is the uh, angle created from the bottom plane. It's over here. So if you think that this part is much higher and this lower, this H2 is greater than H1, right? So H2 is somewhat like here, and H1 is somewhat here. So if you think the angle, higher height has a lesser angle. So that's why it's less. And for a lower height, something like H1, you have a quite large angle. If my class is class four, if it was determined as this, this alpha, alpha. So something is uh, it's like forty-five degrees. Say uh, this thirty meter. For thirty meter, you have forty-five degrees, right? For class four, around forty-five degrees. 
I determine the height, then I get the angle. Okay. And if my arrestor is somewhat like this, these portions are not protected, right? If I decrease the height of the arrestor. For a higher arrestor, I got the building covered, but if my arrestor is too small, then my building would not get protected. And these uh, curves are uh, determined for up to 60 meters. Please keep that in mind. Beyond 60 meters, you cannot define the curve. You cannot extrapolate over here. Okay. Anitya you extrapolate because the standard is giving up to 60 meters. Above 60 meters, you have to implement further protection. Say a building is high over 60 meters, then you would have to have protection uh, at the side of the building. Meter Hatakatada also building makim atheno and Ogulanta, class 4 building protect so, this is the mesh I told you. Okay. From class 1 to class 4, you have mesh sizes. Mesh size is not a class. shape if you have larger mesh size, then the material is less, right? If the mesh is low, you have to have, uh, for a given area of the slab or roof, you have to have uh, quite a huge number of metal for class one. If you go to class four, then you can have them at a quiet distance, right? Then the uh, material quantity can be reduced. But based on that, you cannot reduce that. If you are lucky enough to get uh, assessed as class 4 only, then you can have this uh, benefit. And uh, about the natural components I told you, these are the true like images from our site visits. Air termination, natural components. Natural components, I told you that they are the uh, components of the building which are already providing the uh, uh, lightning protection such that steel roofs with steel columns and uh, perfect grounding. Although you do not have those grounding, then you can introduce grounding system, additional earth rods and correct, connect them correctly. But you need to have a dedicated path for dispersing lightning current. You cannot rely on the uh, Kambi bandala ogulanta shape and abhai can ogulang rebike steel reinforcement column make up the palatino kitana with a rebike a kaksama and abidan overlap karna column sadadi concrete columns dana gota bigger columns dana gota ogulangi steel reinforcement and overlap. In columns you have rebus, right? Dangravani have done. Then, I thought a building columns down a quarter in a mariba overlap color. Then, may what a combi matino. The first one are a column make a box like a gala concrete poor one. So, if you are using these rebus for as your down conductors, you cannot rely on this uh, very light contact. You need to have dedicated contacts such that uh, maybe you need to have proper welding over here. You need to have welding. So if you are using those natural components to reduce the cost, you have to keep in mind that there are certain uh, methods you need to ensure the 
continuous current flow. Otherwise, if you keep even a single rebar without proper welding, in case of a lightning, the whole column could destroy. Professor Lucas lectures on the Katarakti, you know, all the other things that we have to do with lightning protection. So, we have to do with the whole thing. We have to do with the whole thing. Oh, I think, we have to do with the whole thing. We have to do with the whole thing. Then, we have to do with the whole thing. We have to do with the whole thing. वो एक गुड़ा की अतरम साइड्स लो है ना देख कोगा। You need to have security guards to make sure the thefts are not happening actually। मैं लंगड़ दिया पे मैं emergency power plant ये हुवने हो रहा ना हम बंद तोड़। ओके दिको महारे हम बंद तोड़ दी केबल का पागन गिला दिया। अरे even though the security guards guard was there, ठीक है ना? So there's a real risk of thefts. Of copper components because they are very valuable to those drug addicts. So you need to have uh, proper protection, and uh, it's up to the construction people to ensure that uh, such components are concealed, maybe in the ground, within the columns. You need to have protection. So, man, kata ki wat daage be tiyanone lightning protection. Ikapara baladi. पहले पे सवाल लोने थे वाटर अनेहरी एंग पुपुर लती बचाइते चाइत्या सर की न कतार ये तो मुख्य दिलाते हैं ने कुड़का रेल अतरिंग कपाल गिर ले कपागन याना रिच करने पुलान लेवल लेते हैं ना अनेतरिंग कपागन गिर ले सो द रेस्ट ऑफ़ द चार्जेस डिस्पोज़ विदिन दिस पोशन डिस्ट्रॉइंग द होल पार्ट देखो ना मेतनते ने कतान दरे में तमा मगर इफ यू डू नॉट हैव प्रॉपर कनेक्शन सॉलिड कनेक्शंस एस पर द स्टैंडर्ड्स देन यू आर देस अ रेसिस्टेंस ओवर हियर कंटैक्ट रेसिस्टेंस दिस कुड क्रिएट अ ह्यूज अमाउंट ऑफ हीट एनर्जी दिस हीट कुड डिस्ट्रॉय द होल कॉलम कलाप्स इन द बिल्डिंग टोटल बिल्डिंग किलिंग पीपल एंड इट कैन एक्सटेंड राइट सो even the uh, when you are using those uh, metal sheets in the most factories have those zinc uh, alum sheets yakada tahadu tama godak industries wala thiyenne wala ulu ulu hala danna ban industry wala they have to maintain those things and uh, there are also metallic pipes steam lines are running across certain roofs because steam is the Main energy converting substance in industries. Steam thama use karane gudak ka develop hai. Industries sada. Heat energy will be. And you have these ventilators. Exhaust fans wa gave thina na wahalal roof wala. Heat ta ka in karane. So if those are properly connected to the roof and the roof is connected to the steel columns, then you can use those metallic components as the natural components. And uh, if you're using the uh, roof, you should make sure that those metallic sheets are properly interconnected, properly bonded. Maybe in terms of separate cables. This is something we proposed. When you have sheets and uh, you cannot rely on the nut and bolt connections also, right? If you consider a nut and bolt connection, it's something like this. You have a void here. Something like this, right? These are these may be barely touching, so you can rely on those uh, loose connections to divert up a lightning current. 